All right, Ken, next drill. Okay, this is the one we're gonna basically do a little kind of a review of the manipulation. Basically a reload, we're kind of kind of making an adaptation of the El Presidente. Okay. We're a little past 10 meters. I'm saying to come up, give me a burst on each target. Gun should be empty, reload, burst on each target again. This should be interesting because from what we've seen, there's a big difference between how easy it is to reload these three different guns. Oh yeah, and this is gonna be the hardest one. Oh, without a doubt. All right. All right, is the shooter ready? Ready? Stand by. All right, Ken, well, what do you think? Time? Not, not bad. Time was uh, 10.9, just slightly less than 11 seconds. Uh, that one three-shot burst kind of snuck up on yeah, you. Yeah, and then I had the one shot. You're right. It, the key to reloading it was getting it up high so where you could see the T-slot to get it started. The problem is at night. And as you've seen in some of the old training films and stuff, you see the guys actually flip the guns over to load the magazine. Put it in. You know, Ken, as far as reloading, I don't know many guns worse than the Thompson. Yeah, it's got to be one of the worst. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, let's paint them up. We'll get the grease gun. Let's give it a try. Ken, El Prez, grease gun. Hey, M3 grease gun. Actually, we're going to see, you've got a bit of an issue here with the Thompson and the grease gun. It's really set up for right-handed shooter. It's going to take a little bit more manipulation skill, but I think you'll be able to do it. Okay. Okay. Is the shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Now, good news is reload went better than I thought it would. The bad news is I've pulled a couple shots off the first target. Yeah, time is 11.22. Actually, it was longer than the Thompson. Yeah, now, and the other thing is, I got in that two-shot burst mode, and I was able to let off, in, and the bolt was locked to the rear. You know, you and I both know in the real world, that bolt's gonna be, be forward. forward. So you have to rack it. It'd even take, probably add another second. Yeah, second absolutely. Now. And the reality is, if you'll notice, those shots were off to the left. left. In yeah. fact, if you look at your grouping, it's off to the left. So yeah, that didn't go as well as we wanted. No, uh-uh. But yep. interesting. You know what? Let's see what the Chris has got going. Yep, let's do it. Let's set it up and fire up the Chris. All right, Ken, last El Prez with, with the, Chris. the Chris. Now, it's going to be an interesting thing we're going to find out here real quick. You just shot on regular full auto. Yep. You went back to burst. Yeah. Let's see if, in fact, you get two rounds. It goes to one and then kicks up, yeah, goes to one which we've noticed up. shooting the gun. Yeah. All right. All right. Is the shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Well, you know what? We got two shot burst. Yeah, and performance wise, both time, a little over 10 seconds, and hits. hits, best performing gun. Yeah, it was, without a doubt. Part of it's fast cycle great. Two round burst really was an aid here. Manipulation of the gun as far as dropping the magazine, loading the new, new one, one bolt was to the rear. Yep. If even if you use the left hand, hitting that bolt release. Yeah, for me, I gotta come over and hit the magazine release with this finger to drop it and then come over and hit the bolt release. For a right handed shooter, it'd be even easier. He hits it here and then he comes up. I mean, in terms of reloads and sending the bolt forward, this is way ahead of the other really two guns. Probably at particular it's, it's Yeah, this was this was I think this was the clear winner. Yeah, hallelujah. You know, Ken, a couple years ago at SHOT Show, the guys from Chris approached me about having their gun on the show. And I really thought it through before I got back to them because I'm not just gonna fall all over any new gun. I wanted to make sure there was a comparison that kind of made sense, and this is the one that came to mind. Now that you have some trigger time behind the Chris, what's your thoughts? Well, I'll be honest with you, Larry. When we first talked about this, like you, I was kind of prepared to be uh, not very pro Chris. After doing the test and shooting it a bit, I'll be honest with you, I'm pleasantly surprised. It did better than I expected. Candidly, I think the full auto cyclic rate is borderline worthless. But in semi and on two round burst, it's actually pretty effective. I agree, and, and particularly for the homeowner, one of these things in an SBR, 
semi-automatic with a red dot sight, 30 round mag and a white light. It's actually got a lot of merit, especially when you look how compact it is. Much more compact than, say, even a short barreled M4 carbine. Bingo. Now, and of course, going back to the Thompson and the Grease gun, a little historical perspective. We love this gun, but we know really in the real world and kind of from an end user perspective, the Thompson's just not that great of a gun. Well, candidly, this would be the last gun I'd pick. Yeah. Heavy, bulky, not nearly as reliable as people want you to think it is. Realistically, if you measure those two guns, uh, I'd have to pick between the two. I, I, early on, I would have said probably the grease gun, but now, as long as I can stay in two round burst mode, I think the crisp might very well be the gun I'd grab. Yeah, I think so too. Grease gun's a great gun for what it is. No mystery why it stayed in service as long as it did, but now there's a new kid on the block and honestly, pretty impressive gun overall. Yeah, we were both pleasantly surprised. Yep, hope you enjoyed it. We had some great time out here behind these three sub guns. You have a good one. We'll see you next time here on TAC TV.